Captain Clumsy here, and uh, welcome to my third attempt at riding a BSC. GT motorcycles, the big BSA uh, van is there. Huzzah! We can actually get there. And we're only 10 minutes late. Right, let's get parked. Camera off. The sun is now shining. I'm drying out. Let's go. Might do a little bit of town on the way back, a little bit of dual carriageway. How many miles has this thing done? Oh, it's quite a few. Well, 653 so it should be out of its initial run-in phase as ever it's a bit of a stretch for me to get to things but we can do it all right marvelous yeah it was very stable at slow speeds i'll do a proper walk round uh, later in this video but there are lots of videos showing a walk round of this i really just want to talk about does it fit me could I ride this? What changes would I need to make to this bike? And one of the things I'm just noticing is it's fairly heavy to pick up. Uh, okay. And the clutch point point, point point, point point me on some, is well different to my guzzy. Seats comfortable and flat. A touch lurchy on the throttle. We are only doing 2,000 revs. Hello, mirrors. Pretty awful, actually, as they stand. That's another thing I'll have to... Uh, left one's OK. The right one's not brilliant. Gear change is quite close in. On the left-hand side, you're having to reach in with your foot. If you're quite hurt. Mind you, these boots are quite built up, so uh, a pair of lighter boots, you probably wouldn't notice that. The good old Mickey Mouse mirrors, as usual with test bikes, they're still placed for somebody else. Does that help? No, it's made it worse. Yeah, so it's comfortable, it's very traditional view out to the front, that one I like. Handlebars are actually slightly pulled back, really, so it's definitely an upright riding position. Your feet are dead under you. You're upright, the bars are kind of just about there, that's nice, I like that. The clocks are quite fairly flat and probably not in the ideal position, but on the other hand, they do look cool. Haven't really got out of third gear yet. It is probably too high for me, like everything is, but for most normal people, i.e. anybody over about five foot six. Always paraphrase my friend, an all-year motorcyclist, marvellous. Yeah, gear change is really positive and comfortable once you get used to where it is. So this will just be a poodle along uh, an A road throttle after that initial slight lurchiness, very linear. And we're up to 45, which is the speed limit ish, handling pretty neutral actually, on the slow side probably. So, if you're looking to buy this, so the kind of bikes you're going to be comparing it again are the Royal Enfields, so that's Continental GT, Interceptor, Super Meteor, but it's a single and it has that single character. Um, it's not overly loud, I have to say. It's uh, fairly restrained. Let's get up into top gear. Fuel tank is full, the speedo thing is quite dim. I don't know whether there's a brightness adjuster, a lot of these do. USB ports on bars, I think I'd get used to them. They're not brilliantly placed, but um, at least they're not really obnoxious. Uh, keep it above 2000, I think, just out of sympathy. Um, 
it, the roads are dryish, so I should be able to get a reasonable amount of riding. Yeah, it just sneaks in, clicks in. Gear change brakes all good. Handling slow but neutral. Really haven't tested it at all. At low speeds. Trickles along nicely. Can't see any evidence of a clock. Now there is a mode button on the right or an info button. That changes things to a different odometer. Oh, that's trip A. Still trip A. I'll stop and go through those some point rather than trying to do it on the road. Although of course you should be able to do it on the road. Yeah, it's flickable but it's not twitchy. Does that make sense? Bear in mind this is my riding impressions. I have ridden this bike before um, briefly. Um, so I've got a reasonable understanding of it, but you know, don't take my word for gospel. Um, this is definitely on the list of future bikes. It's a single cylinder, it's got that character, it's got the looks. Certainly, I don't mind the radiator myself. Um, I know some people do. And yes, there are probably a few things that could be doing with being improved. But gear change is not one of them. You can move around on the seat, which is a I think this is good if you're doing longer rides. I haven't tested at higher speeds. The illumination of the clocks is pretty. You're going to look cool at night on this thing. In fact, you're just going to look cool on all together. And it moves forward when you twist the throttle in a controlled but nice way. So let's see where we go with this roundabout. Nope. Let's keep heading on to Kingsbridge. But you can trickle along in the higher gears without too much worry about, you know, engine stuttering or stalling. So actually, with this riding position and uh, the general trickleability, trickleability, it'd make it quite a good commuter. And I'm guessing the consumption is really good. I haven't been able to find out whether we've got consumption uh, info on this but uh, I'll find out when I do a stop walk around get the DJI out have a good close look yeah yeah once you figure out where that uh, gear change is it's no bother at all and the clutch bike point so we're in third The rails start to get up, but it does get a little bit coarser, I must admit. However, we are having a better time than we did last time. And pricing on these about 7,000, it depends on the colour scheme you choose. Um, I don't think they've raised the price yet. Um, there is some debate on whether you go for the uh, Legacy, is it, version, which has a different finish on uh, some of the engine parts. National speed limit at last. Nice pop, pop, pop from the uh, exhaust at the back there. Hey, we got up to 50. First overtake. Come on! Not past the second. So we're in top, we're doing 60, but we're just under 4k revs. I think this is the kind of best speed for this. There's a bunch of guys out there. It'd be nice to stop at a cafe somewhere and have a and just admire the bike. And it's definitely the sort of bike that you sit and admire. For certain. Uh, 
but think we're going to go as far as Exeter. Right, concentrate. Beautiful countryside. Indicator still on. Indicator warning lights really quite dim. First. Oh, what's he doing? He's on the wrong side of the road. Anything you like. you've got enough power to overtake on a country road that's really what you're going to need it is not a motorway cruiser but we have got up to motorway speed dealt with that pothole pretty well yeah nice verbal by the way, if you think my riding style is crap, that's fine. <laughs> I might think the same about yours. But, uh, I'm not here to give lessons on riding, okay? Just talking about this bike. Oh, let's go to Ugbra. That was a very poor turn off because I missed the uh, turn signal. I know, let's do the walk round here. Side stand's in an awkward place because to get the side stand down you somehow got to avoid the uh, foot peg. Right, let's get the other camera out, do a walk around, it's all snoke test. So, the BSA 650 Gold Star. Alloy rims, single front disc, metal mud guards, radiator is okay, big pipe, I think that's probably double skin for the usual uh, emissions control, that's the uh, finish of that, and it's just beginning to be a little bit of not corrosion but not damage on suspension. I believe it sounds nice when you take the baffle out, which is there. I'll do you a exhaust sound in a second. Tyres Pirelli Phantom Sport. Same as my Guzzi 15070 R17 rear. BSA logo on the back. You'd want to pick that out in white, wouldn't you? I think that might be a plastic side panel. That's a power socket, so you've got USB and... 12 volt power, start up sequence, key in the ignition straightforwardly, turn, they do a slow sweep, there's a fuel warning light but there's uh, no need for that because it's more or less full, you get the little a group of warning lights so you get side stand, ABS, neutral, oil pressure, so we've got the odometer and the only thing you can change on the bars so that's showing 665.5 miles. That's good that it's got uh, a decimal point in it. Press 1 goes to trip A. Press 2 goes to trip B, which is the same on this case. And that's all you've got, my handsome. No gear, gear position indicator. The USB sockets. They could have been smaller, you know. Smaller would have been better, but it does click shut very nicely on the left bars you've got the levers which are not adjustable I would substitute those for a pair of nicer adjustable levers got your headlight flasher button you've got indicators horn on this side you've got your hazards starter the aforementioned info button and a kill run kill switch brake fluid reservoir which is quite neat the bars, as I said, are fairly pulled back. A uh, little bit of a scrape on there. No, that's just very handsome. I like the way the uh, LED lights are, or the lights are very sort of compact. I wouldn't need to change those. I like the sort of brushed effect on the exhaust pipe. Some have said that they prefer the um, finish on the Legacy model. On that, yeah, handsome bike big and sturdy, old-fashioned, in the best possible way. Right, enough of that.
there's your headlight which is halogen so not LED and again you might want to change that but you do have a BSA logo in in it right look at that beautiful logo on the tank color is nice I personally like the green I think a lot of people do yeah. heading right. back now uh, where I stopped to do the walk round turned out to be in, in front of somebody's field and she wanted to go into it but she, the lady was ever so polite and she was really interested in the bike and uh, no bother at all so uh, that was all done very amicably but she could have been cross with me but she wasn't so that's good yes so very limited information provided but as it's been often stated what else do you need well, a clock, I think, in today's uh, world, to be quite honest. So I'll get this fairly gently back to the dealers. Get around towards a rev limit. You can get quickly enough, and <laughs> to speed quickly enough, in this bike if you really want to. I don't think it's that sort of bike. 50, 55, 60, 65 east of the speeds on roads like this perfect rear brake is barely, well it doesn't really do anything very much actually from what I can feel I'll have another go with it when we get to somewhere a bit slower What's this geezer doing? Yeah. Whoa. That's a risk of going too fast on these country roads is you end up T-boning somebody who's done a manoeuvre like that. I mean, he couldn't see either side. So, you, in, in effect, you've got to come out to um, make the manoeuvre, which is very risky, I must admit. I wouldn't fancy it. Oh yeah, this is it. This is what you'd ride a bike for. Marvellous so. Indicator feel is not terribly positive, I would say. And the indicator light is quite dim, so that's something you'll have to get used to. Yeah, if there's ever a version two of this bike, just a few tweaks. Some of the tweaks you could do yourself, of course. I know say people will be altering them to look more retro. Some people will be cafe racering them and somebody will be bobbering them and desert sledding them and scrambling in and scrambling like my speech scrambled. So yeah, here we go. Nice sort of speed. Get up to around 60, 60 to when you need to put the brakes on there's plenty enough it's not super grumpy but oh dear. but it's also quite a practical bike in many ways as, uh, you know, fuel economy is going to be really good and it's going to be relatively straightforward to maintain because the uh, the engine is based on a trolley and trusted well, it's, it's cycling day today is it I'm not going to Kingsbridge, me handsome. Thank God the actual test ride was dry. I've dried out now. Note to self, don't bring summer gloves, but it's raining. So, if you're following, you know, like a fastish car, like a Mini Cooper, a BMW, that sort of thing, have you got enough power to kind of dispose of them adequately? I think probably not much in the same boat as my uh, Moda Guzzi where you can deal with most average saloons with the uh, faster gnarlier ones if they're in the mood would be a problem but then again as I said earlier you're not riding this bike for that purpose it's a relaxed ride out you could do longer rides and I bet some people will be dressing it out for touring because again it's got an economical engine it can do the motorway speeds adequately. Screen though, it's an interesting point because it, I think it would look awkward with a big screen. Maybe a fly screen would be good. 
I haven't seen any accessories listed yet. They're doing clothing, which is a bit poncy, really. Catering for the hipster crowd, you know, you've got to, got to look the part. Yeah, at a, at a cost, which is way too much. I think we might be able to scoot cast one or two here. That's exactly what this bike's for. These uh, sorts of conditions. Yeah, I think the mirrors you'd change for bar ends, almost certainly. Because they're, well, they're not really anything one or the other. I dare say there will be accessorised ones, but yeah, bar ends with a BSA logo on would look uh, smart and cool and probably give a better view than these, because uh, whoever's adjusted them a different size and shape than myself. But that's part of the pleasure of ownership, isn't it? You're getting the bike sorted yourself. Again, seat relatively firm, but flat, which I know a lot of people like. Um, you'd only know what it's like after a long day in the saddle, which I'm not going to get today. Um, so, this might be a good point to say, if you've been watching this video and uh, enjoying it, despite my uh, clumsiness, please, please, please do like, comment and subscribe. Negative comments are welcomed as long as they're phrased in a way that's not overtly rude. Um, you know, and comments about the suitability of the bike, you know, for a short person, I'm five foot four, it's just about manageable. I might want to lower the seat a little bit and maybe get Hagen to make some uh, better shocks at the back. So that would also improve the ride, which is just turning out to be a tad on the bouncy side. So softly damp, bouncy springs. If you wanted to, to improve the sort of handling, you'd go with progressive fork springs, which no doubt tech will be working on right now. Um, Hagen shocks for the back would be ideal, the 2810s or, or even the remote reservoir, maybe not the remote reservoir, they wouldn't look right. But yeah, adjustable shocks, get the right balance, uh, and maybe a more comfortable seat. They say somebody will be looking for a calf racer type seat, maybe a seat cowl even. So those are all possibilities without kind of going too rad. And of course, I'm sure somebody's also working on um, you know, camshaft to breathing changes to make this mo motor a bit more pokey because it's it's not super fast. Let's put that. And now I've got used to the gear change. You can do the clutch with with one finger. Marvelous. Not quite the gear. Not quite the brake lever though. That requires a little bit more pull. And let's try that back brake again. Yeah, it does sort of work, but it's not dramatic. And everybody knows what a BSA is, so you'll get lots of comments from old men. But from that lady, she wasn't old, she was perhaps a bit younger than me. Um, traditional, retro, classics, whatever you call them. This is my sort of bike. I would be quite happy to own one. Am I going to buy one? That's the $64 question, isn't it? Oof, it's a bit hard lump keeping that and that as well. So, yeah, potholes and um, manholes, it's not that confident with. But that's time to get out the progressive springs and the adjustable shocks, all that fun you can do on a bike. And now I'm feeling pretty comfortable and confident, actually. I like the spread of the bars, it feels right for me. I want heated grips. I hope when they bring out accessories there are heated grips because that's, for me, number one useful thing because that extends the riding season. I'm really enjoying this now. Yeah. It responds in top gear at 40. It's, it's a bit uh, leisurely. Not, you can't just snap the throttle open and go, but uh, there is also a nice sense of ease. So this is, remember, this is a riding impressions video. It's not a specs video. I might put up a few bits and pieces on screen from time to time, but if you want to go and learn the specs, go on the BSA website. Watch the watch TMF has no doubt gone through it in uh, 
mind-bogglingly fine detail. And oh, it's just trickling down to stop. Nice stable. White and neutral, which is almost invisible, especially with a sun visor. So take over is around twelve, fourteen hundred. I think you've got to take the battle out to get the get the real value. I do believe tech parts do a sort of modified baffle which this is halfway between baffle full baffle in and no baffle that might be a, a worth and also their prices for things are not unreasonable compared to some people Motown for example seem to be very expensive I can't see how they're better unfortunately you can't go really racing past in case you end up breaking the uh, speed limit and fine so yeah it's kind of into so, just enjoy the last little bit in the urban sprawl, which of course a lot of these bikes will be in. So they do well in the urban sprawl, I think. They're not too wide. Uh, they've got enough power, but they're not silly and they're not silly expensive. Uh, hopefully, they'll be getting lots more out on the road. And I could probably actually afford them. There's a badging on the uh, locking tank cap, very nice, 1903. Of course, they haven't been in continuous production since then, but uh, the brand started then. I think uh, BSA stands for Birmingham Small Arms. They were originally a uh, um, rifle manufacturer, essential rifle and ammunition and so forth. Obviously made a lot of motorbikes in the World Wars and at other times, one time the biggest motorcycle manufacturer in the world, as Jeremy Clarkson would say. But sadly they fell on hard times due to the British inability to change things. Right. Ooh, there's a lot of people here now. Now yeah, then. Whereabouts are they going to want me? Oh, there's a proper BSA. Boys? Yes. Oh, the sun's come out. Yeah, it Marvellous. That's a proper BSA. So we're back at the uh, BSA dealership uh, for a test ride on the BSA Gold Star, which actually went very well. Um, I just stuck to the A road, uh, did a little bit of walk around. Um, so it's still very much on my personal list. Uh, but again, of course, there's things like finance and money. And my own personal horizon is something like I retire in approximately a year's time. So I'm looking for a retirement bike. The only thing that bothers me is that for bikes like the BSA and even my own uh, Motor Goodsy, I'm still having to hop from one foot to the other because of my lack of height. For most people, that wouldn't be an issue, of course. But, but for me, I'm thinking about a bike that might be more grounded. So I recently test rode the Honda Rebel uh, 1100T. Um, link above or later in the video or below. And also the Triumph Bobber, which is definitely one of the sexiest bikes around, um, but is very expensive for, for what it is. And the Rebel, by comparison, is relatively cheap, around 10,000. Well, thank you very much. So for many people, this would be an ideal commuter stroke weekend bike, maybe the odd uh, tour if you're prepared to put in the effort to adjust it for that. But I suspect more people will go down the cafe racer. Thank you. Um, got the right coffee now. Marvellous. Go to cafe racer at all or make it even more old school. I could certainly see a pair of uh, shrouded hardened shots going on the back. That would look real, really good. Um, would you change the headlight to LED? Possibly for safety reasons. Exhaust, you can take the baffle out so you get more sound. And you can also get a, a medium uh, effect baffle from tech bike parts. So there are beginning to be things available. I'm sure tuning parts will be available too. So it's, as I probably said before, I think it's the bike pretty much for, for every man as long as they're not expecting too much in the way of power. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Captain Clumsy. See you in the next one.